Well, here's your host of the Nebraska Basketball Radio Show, Greg Sharp. Thank you. Welcome to our program. The head coach with us for an hour. Here are the numbers. If you want to be a part of this show, 866-HUSKER-1, 866-487-5371. you survive in this cold, snowy, slippery night out there? It's getting a little slick out there. It looks, looks like the temperatures are dropping a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so be careful, everybody. It hasn't really been that bad. Well, you knew it was coming. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I've lived in the Midwest my entire life, so it's just a matter of time. But, yeah, I mean, we've been obviously very fortunate to this point. Has it affected any of your travel to this point? Uh no, we thought it might affect us getting back the other night. It was pretty nasty when we landed. It was, was cold, it? windy, snowing. Uh, but, yeah, they did a great job at Lincoln Airport and got us in. And you're out of here tomorrow to go to the East Coast. Heading East Coast, yep. yep. Should be uh, should be gone, hopefully. Um, you know, long flight out there, early game, mm-hmm. uh, which which is good. I mean, we'll get back at a decent time. And then we have the game against Michigan uh, on Tuesday. So, yeah, big opportunity for us here, playing a great team in Rutgers. is playing as well as anybody right now. They had an unbelievable game. It's one of the better games I've seen in the league so far with Iowa. Uh, last night, very entertaining game, very high scoring. Uh, but at home, it <clears throat> sounds like it's the first sellout they've had uh, this year. It's the mm-hmm. first time they've been ranked, I think they said, since 1979. So it's, it's going to be rocking. I mean, that place is loud when it's half full. So uh, it's going to be a great environment, great atmosphere, and hopefully we go out and compete well. I've been impressed with what Coach Peichel's done there. Do you know him very well? I know Steve very well. I, uh, I actually got to know him when he was at Stony Brook, and I was out recruiting the prep schools out in the Northeast. And uh, we had a kid, George Niang, who played for me. He's one of the best mm-hmm. players that ever played for me, one of the most important players I ever had uh, from Tilton uh, Prep School out in, in New Hampshire. And I would see Steve out there all the time. And George played in a team that had Nerlens Noel, who was the number one mm-hmm. player in the country, Wayne Selden, who ended up at Kansas, uh, Good, Le- Good Luck Okanubu, who ended up at UNLV. Uh, they had a team full of studs. And I heard from Bobby Lutz, actually, was the one that got tipped off on George. So I went out there, and they had a guy that I worked with in the NBA from the Boston Celtics named Leo Papil. And Leo uh, was the coach of Georgia's AAU team. He said, I promise you, you come out here as your kind of kid, uh, you're going to fall in love with him. So I went out there, and George was, you know, overweight and a little bit pudgy and couldn't jump. But he was destroying those guys. He was jump hook over Nerland's right hand, left hand. And my point on this is Steve, so George committed to us. And Steve Peichel uh, was out there in the area, and he was always up at the prep school. He said, I promise you, because other teams were starting to get involved. Other big schools were starting to talk to him and you know which you shouldn't do but it happens <laughs> so Steve said I probably let me just tell you this he said you're fine he said if any of those guys start messing with George I got your back he said he's going to Iowa State and George kept to his uh, word and he again he was a phenomenal player for us he's having a great year with the Utah Jazz this year so I'm happy for him but yeah Steve is a great person and you know it's good to see him doing well yeah they're 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 a legit team people have been questioning them they're pretty good I know the the game at, at Wisconsin was a loss but there were some really good things done by the Huskers in that game. I thought we really competed, Greg, and, and that's the thing I told them after the game is I was really proud of them how they went out and competed at a high level. Uh, that first half was really good. Uh, you know, Wisconsin hit shots. There's no doubt about that. They had 18 uh, threes in the game. They had eight in the first half. Uh, we did a really good job, I thought, shrinking in there. We had two deflections that we just – didn't come up with the ball. Very unlucky. They hit two threes on those plays. We had a couple good contests, and then we just had a few where we closed out hand down. Uh, we missed a switch that we worked on uh, several times leading into that game. So a couple mistakes, but a couple of those I thought we really defended well. Uh, second half, they came out and they, uh, you know, they stayed on fire. Unfortunately for us, but we did do good things, Greg. We outscored them by 20 in the paint. That's a that's a big thing for our team. We hadn't done that. Uh, outscored anybody in the paint, I think, going all the way back to you know our second or third game of the season. So, um, you know, for us to go out there and compete against a very big physical team that likes to slow it down, uh, you know, to score it the way we did, especially in that first half, uh, shooting 54%, uh, ball was flying around, our attack to the basket. I thought we made good, smart plays, and we took our time in there. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, the, the performance, I thought, uh, battling back a couple times, you know, cut that thing to a manageable deficit. We cut it to five on a Kevin Cross three on a after timeout play. And, uh, you know, unfortunately couldn't get closer to that. They answered it. They hit shots. Uh, give them credit. But I was pleased with how we went out and competed. You mentioned Kevin. It appears to me he's growing up for you. Kevin's been terrific. Uh, you know, I look at both of our freshman bigs with uh, with Ivan, you know, being the starter who, you know, I know we've talked about this, he technically could be a junior in high school mm-hmm. right now. So, uh, you know, you're asking guys to go out and play at a position in this league against some of the top bigs in the nation. Uh, you know, you look at this game going on right now. 
now in the Big Ten. You got Wesson and Atoro uh, out there, and then Garza, and <clears throat> you know the uh, you know big big guys will play tomorrow. They got two of them. Uh, you know, for them to go out and battle the way they do uh, has been great. And they're two totally different players. You know, Ivan's been solid for us down there defensively, rebounding the ball. Uh, you know, youngest player to get a double-double in Nebraska history. And uh, Kevin being able to stretch the floor. And that's what we went to in that second half. And that's what uh, kept us around that game. I thought he and Cam had a nice chemistry going. Uh, Burke some was turning the corner on that backside. If he didn't have it, he'd throw ahead to a quick step up. And, and that's where Kevin was getting his baskets. You mentioned Deshaun. Sometimes when you're the leading scorer, you maybe he didn't play all that well, but I, he legend scoring. But I thought he played really well. He did. He his attack was uh, was terrific, and you know, getting into the paint and finished well. Uh, and, and that's the thing. I thought he took his time when he got in there. Uh, he had a few games where he got in there. He's a little quick and sped up, uh, sped up got yeah. his shot blocked a few times. So you know, to go in there the way he did under control and had a couple just big league finishes. That dunk he had uh, over top of uh, the entire team uh, was pretty impressive. You, you, you mentioned the points in the paint, 36 points in the paint, and a lot of that was just taking the ball to the basket. And some of that really happened in your half-court sets even. Yeah, I, well, that's what Wisconsin does. They force you to play in the half-court. They, they're the best at getting back and transition and eliminating uh, uh, easy easy uh, baskets on the break. And, you know, they're going to force you to go out there and run your stuff and, and execute if you have any chance. And I thought we did that. Uh, and a lot of that was Burke. He did a good job of attacking. Uh, Cam, uh, you know, continues to do a great job taking care of the basketball. Uh, you know, the top 25 teams, I just saw the stat today, the top 25 teams in pace, which we're 13th right now in the nation, were number one in taking care of the basketball. Number two was Gonzaga. So we're doing a good job with that. Cam's making really good decisions. I think he's over a three to one assist to turnover ratio now in league games, almost a four to one assist to turnover ratio. Uh, that's another stat where we lead the league uh, as far as taking care of the basketball. And that's what you want to do. You know, we preach playing fast <clears throat> all the time. We work on it a lot. Uh, and it's very important if you're going to do that uh, to take care of the basketball. And our guys have done a solid job with it so far. Ben and I were talking about this during hour one tonight. You lead the league in assists. You lead, the, I think, your second or third in turnover to assist ratio. You lead the league in three-pointers made. Those are good things you can hang your hat on. They, they, they are good things. Uh, you know, obviously, we struggle in certain areas. Rebounding uh, is one of them, defending the paint. Uh, we're last in block shots. Um, you know, free throw percentage. We're not doing a good job, which right. is which is strange. If you if you lead the league in three point makes, you, you should, should be a better free throw shooting team. Right. But you know, a lot of that's mental. And you know, believe it or not, we have gone up. We're not last in league games played. So there's somebody behind us. I'm not sure who it is. Um, but yeah, it is. It's um, you know, it's something that you can be proud of because of that's the style that we're trying to to implement here in year one. Uh, to be able to establish a style of play that we feel can be successful long term, and our guys have bought into it, uh, especially playing fast. Like I said, we're we're you know pretty far and away the number one pace team in our league, uh, and we want to continue to do that. But um, you know, it it is it's something that we struggle with with uh, with our lack of size and experience, especially at that big position uh, in rebounding. You know, our wings uh, aren't doing as good a job certain games, uh, and that's hurt us. But lately, we've been a little better in that stat, and we're going to have to continue to improve. If we want to win both the Indiana game on Saturday and the Wisconsin game you had slow starts to the second half was there a commonality between the two or well the the Indiana game going back and looking at that uh, you know the kid Brunk who uh, you, you know if he was going to stand the perimeter shoot we were going to live with those and you know we needed to shrink it in on you know Trace Jackson Davis who who killed us in the paint in the first game and also Justin Smith who's a big small forward at almost 6'9 so you know when we're shrunk in there our guys are doing what we talk about in the game plan and Bronk hits what runner from the free throw line you know you don't see many guards hit that shot and uh, he had another one as well we look at the hot spots and where guys shoot and he hadn't made one of those all year so he hits two of those Justin Smith who'd hit six threes all year he comes down on a break and hits one so you know they score those eight points and now you know moves from a f I think it was a four point game to a 12 point game we call the timeout uh, unfortunately had uh, you know not as good possessions they built that thing up to 18 but our guys kept fighting we got all the way back to eight and the thing late in that game Greg that is very uncharacteristic as we talked about taking care of the ball when we had opportunities when I thought we really defended well in that stretch and we rebounded well but we just could not uh, get over the hump because we turned the basketball over. I think five out of six possessions we had turnovers, uh, and that's uh, what did us in uh, at the end of that game. But uh, yeah, the start of the second half, that one, Wisconsin, <clears throat> you know, those guys 
went out and obviously had shot at a high level. We scored the last six possessions of the first half. We had six straight possessions where we scored. Uh, so, you know, we felt pretty good about what we were doing. Uh, unfortunately, missed a couple good looks and had a couple, I thought, possessions where we settled uh, for long shots as opposed to continue to attack where we had so much success in that first half. You talked about playing well defensively. You sure did against Indiana. They went eight minutes in that second half without a field goal. And that allowed you to get back in it because your defense was so good. It did allow us to get back in it. And that, that's where, uh, you know, we had it at a manageable number. And then we just, again, those turnovers right. were the thing that, you know, you scored two of those possessions, two out of those six. Uh, who knows what happens? I win it yeah, at home, especially with the, you know an unbelievable crowd. It was a sellout, and uh, you know they were into it. But unfortunately, we just uh, we turned the basketball over, and again, that's something that we've done a good job of all year, especially for a young team that hasn't played together. Oscar basketball brought to you by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit them at buyfordnow.com. The head coach with us until the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of the program, here are the numbers 866 Oscar 1 866 487 5371. As you can dot us up on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family, bringing you more choices in brands, locations, and service. Experience the difference. Purchase with confidence. This is Woodhouse. Back with a lot more of the coach coming up. You're listening to Sports Nightly. This is Oscar 1 866 487 5371. The number if you want to be a part of the program tonight. It's our men's basketball show with the head coach Fred Hoiberg. The Huskers getting ready to head to Rutgers to take on the Scarlet Knights on Saturday. It's been a tough stretch, and yet, what is the attitude like in the locker room? Are the guys hanging in there right now, even though you haven't had a win for a while? Yeah, guys are doing good. They, you know, they understand that, you know, this is. Uh, you know, all about taking the, the right steps and, you know, by going out there and trusting that, uh, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get better and correct things and continue to build on the things we're doing well. And they've approached practice with a very business-like approach. And, you know, I've been really pleased with uh, today was a great practice. We went in and had a good film session. We watched every shot that uh, Wisconsin made, every, every three, and what we could have done a better job of mm -hmm. and what we did well, where they just hit shots over top of us. Uh, but, yeah, our guys are coming in every day with a great attitude. Uh, they're continuing to work. And I think if we continue to play with the same time of effort and togetherness that we played with, Greg, that, you know, we'll, we'll have a, cha a chance to win some of these last games. To the untrained eye, I thought the body language of this team was spotty early in the year, but much better now. So that's with how I base it. It looks like the guys are enjoying playing. Yeah, out there. and, you know, it's not totally unexpected when you have so many new players. And, you know, what, what, you, what happens when you face adversity for the first time? Now we've seen it, obviously, mm -hmm. a lot. And, you know, we're handling it much better. You know, perfect example was the other night when, uh, you know, we – dig ourselves a couple of double digit deficits but we fight back and give ourselves a chance and that didn't happen early in the season so i have been really pleased uh with how the guys have come together and go out there and and uh you know are doing are doing it uh you know as, as one to try to win the game and that, that's that's a big step you played indiana last saturday for the second time this year you'll play rutgers this saturday for the second time this year how much tweaking of a game plan do you do or do you see other teams do against you you know that game probably as much as any to be honest with you Greg I was as disappointed as any that we played I just I, you know the defensive intensity the defensive energy wasn't where it needed to be the physicality wasn't where it needed to be and uh, you know that's what Rutgers tries to do to you especially Each in year. their home building and they're 13 and 0 in that building and uh, played incredible basketball so um, you know we're gonna have to go in there with the right uh, frame of mind and it's just gonna be one of those games where we have got to hit them before they hit us if they hit us they're too long they're too athletic they're too big uh, they're too physical so we have to go out there and do a better job in the glass the, the, we didn't guard the ball as well as we needed to the other night as well and when you don't guard the ball and you have a blow by situation now you're helping and you know it's you have a tough time cracking down on their seven footer and uh, that, that's where they took advantage of us so we have to do a much better job of guarding the basketball we have must get back in transition and we have to handle spurts because it's going to be loud in there on Saturday. 866-HOSKER-1-866-487-5371. Let's go to the phones. Grand Island, Mike, you're up with the head coach. Hey, I just got a quick question. Uh, it seems like today's any sports league or any college professional, you know, coaches or managers just aren't really given time to develop their teams and really put their stamp on it. And Bill Moose has shown that he is willing to give time. And I just kind of am curious how comforting is that as a head coach, knowing you have time to really build this team. And I'll hang up and listen to your comment. Yeah, it's a great question, Mike. I, it, it is. It's, you know, an era where, you know, there's so much what, what have you done for me lately? And, you know, when, when you're 
taking over a program. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways to do it. And, you know, it's a similar situation uh, at Nebraska that we took over at Iowa State. We had very few scholarship players uh, that, uh, you know, that, that were holdovers from the previous uh, year. And, uh, you know, we had to build it with uh, signing 11 guys basically in a month. And, you know, with that, there's going to, there's, it's going to take some time. You know, there's a couple jobs even in this league, even where guys went on to a different uh, situation. Uh, you know, Michigan, for example, uh, with Beeline uh, leaving, you know, they had some pieces that were very experienced players at, at key positions with Simpson and with Teske and with Livers and those kind of guys. And, uh, you know, they're going to be a little bit further ahead in the process because those guys have played together. So, uh, you know, not only with, with Bill uh, in, in the you know, everything that he's done and, you know, the pace and she's showing. But I think our fan base has been phenomenal with us, with this team and understanding where we are and, uh, you know, having the patience to understand that this is going to take a little while to build. Uh, you know, they've been unbelievable with that, even, you know, not only showing up to the games and, you know, the way they're pulling for these guys, but, you know, anytime I'm out for dinner or out in the community, uh, you know, people are saying great things to us and they like the style and the system and, you know, feel that we can get this thing turned around quickly and they're going to be there for us. And that's very comforting uh, when you have an athletic director uh, that's as doing the things that he's doing and you also have a fan base uh, that you know is going to be patient and be there for you. Bill has always said he's pretty much hands off. He hires you and he lets you do it. If you need him, you know where to find him. Has he been around much? Did, or do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, that's that's how he is, and you know, it's it's there. there there's a lot of different ways to manage, and uh, you know, Jamie Pollard at Iowa State was very similar. He was very, you know, he, when he hired you, and if you need anything, uh, you know where to reach him, and, and that's that's Bill's approach as well. And I really like that. You know, I, I have called him on uh, several occasions when I feel like we need something, and and he's been there for us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's he's there. He's supportive. Uh, he understands where we are, and uh, you know I've been really, really impressed with Bill's leadership. I want to ask you about a couple of skirmishes that have happened in college basketball the last couple of days. Big one in Lawrence the other night between Kansas and Kansas State, where they made him come back out and finish the game or play one more second. Illinois Purdue, you had an Illinois player step on a Purdue player. The league has suspended him for a couple games. That, this kind of happens in conference play, doesn't it? Where you get, you just, there's some animosity you get in league play. Well, yeah. First of all, it's very unfortunate, obviously. You hate to see what happened at the end of that Kansas game. You hate to see what happened in the middle of that game uh, with Illinois where you know you had a key contributor in that team uh, make a very poor decision. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, unfortunately now he's going to have to sit a couple games. But you know, those are the consequences. Uh, I'll say this, you know, I've been a part in the NBA where, you know, there was bench clearing brawls where you have things and, you know, they've changed the rules there. If you leave the bench in the NBA now, if you're one step on the floor, that's an automatic suspension. So, you know, benches for the most part stay um, on the sideline in that, you know, the, you know, for what happened in the Kansas game with both benches, everybody cleared, uh, you know, things can happen like that. You know, listen, it, this is an emotional game. Obviously, it's a physical game. That was a rivalry. It's a huge rival, you know, coaching in that league. I know how uh, heated that rivalry can get. Uh, but you never want to see you get to that point, uh, you know. So you, you just try to educate your players as well as you can and, uh, you know, hope those types of things don't happen to your program. That was my next question. What Do you have conversations with your guys about, all right, if something blows up, you can't leave here? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it's something that you just uh, try to do the best job you can. Now, again, heat of the moment and heat of the battle. Uh, you know, is it going to happen with 18-year-old kids all the time? You, you just don't know right. uh, how that w will end up reacting because most of them haven't been in a situation like that. So. You know, I'm sure that's the first time a lot of those guys have seen something like that happen, and they just joined the fray out there. So, yeah, it's again, you just try to use it anytime something happens. You try to use it as an educational piece for your team. The uh, the Huskers were heading to Rutgers, back home to take on Michigan. We we were t taping our television show earlier today. We were going over the conference standings, and down near the bottom is Michigan and Ohio State. The Buckeyes are in a real battle right now with Minnesota. And those two teams at one point in time this year, Coach, were in the top five in the AP poll. It's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, that just shows how difficult our league is. When you see a team like Michigan win the Battle of Atlantis and knock off Gonzaga, who's, I guess, just got leapfrogged by Baylor. But, you know, they're number two in the nation right now. And, you know, they went down there and beat three really good teams in that tournament to get uh, up to number five in the rankings, uh, you know, now, uh, you know, I know they've got a, a key injury and, you know, that plays a part with livers uh, being out uh, like he is right now. But it's, uh, you know, it, it's just crazy the parity in this league. Ohio State, same thing. They get all the way up to number one. Uh, I believe were they one or two. Yeah, um, yeah two. number two. Sorry. But, you know, they've uh, 
you, you know, gone out and played against some tough teams in this league, and especially on the road. When you go on the road, uh, you're in for a war every time you step on that floor. It's not like they forgot how to play basketball. It's just it, the meat of the meat grinder of the schedule. Yeah, it's just I'm telling you, it's just how good this league is. When you have 12 teams that are projected to be in the tournament. Uh, it's just unheard of. So, yeah, to go out there and, and uh, you know, play this type of schedule, play 20 league games, you're going to have some setbacks. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. A lot more with the coach coming up. 866-HOSKER-1, the number if you want to be a part of this. Back with more next. Your Dorothy Lynch homestyle dressing and condiment is the one-of-a-kind taste that goes with anything good for game day or any day. Dorothy Lynch, endless flavorabilities. Welcome back to our Nebraska men's basketball show for the week. Head coach Fred Hoiberg with us, 866-HOSKER-1, 866-487-5371. Minnesota goes on the road and gets a big win. We've seen some road wins here in the last couple days. That's a big win for the Gophers there tonight. Great win. Huge shot by Carr to, uh, uh, to hit the game winner there. That's, yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable win for Minnesota. Since we had you in here the last time, you've added a guy onto the roster with a scholarship, Charlie Easton. Yeah, you a great job on the scout team. You know, it was a matter of time before he was going to get an opportunity. And, uh, you know, when we switched some things up with the rotation, he went out there, even when he wasn't scoring, he was still going out there and battling. And, uh, you know, the one play that really sticks out, we were playing against Purdue, and he gets into Harms' Harms. legs on a block out and, uh, you know, dies on the floor, uh, I believe, in the Iowa game and calls a timeout, you know, maybe as big a play as any in the entire night. And then he hits a couple big shots in the game uh, against Indiana to keep us in it. So I've uh, been really pleased with Charlie. He's just uh, he's done a great job. You know, Jace Pikowski has been great for us as a walk-on as well as Brett Porter. So uh, you need those in your program. You need guys that are going to come in, help prepare, uh, you know, the guys that are in the rotation. And all those guys, uh, when they've had that role, uh, have starred in it. Thor has really been good for you. Didn't shoot it as well the other night against Wisconsin, but he had been on a tear from three-point range. Yeah, you know, Thor, again, he's another guy you just, you're just you so happy for him because of how much time he puts into his game. He's always one of the first guys in the gym. He's one of the last to leave. He's always uh, working on a shot, you know, ever since we got the job. He's been in there. You know, Thor's got such a good feel for the game. That's why he's been such a good compliment to Cam. He knows when to cut. Uh, you know, we've got slash rules, we call them, if, uh, you know, Cam's dribbling out the outside side of a step up pick and roll the corner guy slashes uh sorry the slot slashes if you go on the inside the corner slashes and thor's got such a good feel for that when his defender turns his head he's slashing to the basket uh, he's finishing well uh in the paint as well uh and then again he's shooting the ball as well as anybody in our league right now so you know you need that you need floor spacers around a guy like cam who's got such a good feel for the game we just saw a game finish up at ohio state he was hitting shots all over that court that night against the buckeyes when i look out there every now and then coach I'll look at who he's guarding. I'm like, whoa. He, you, he's had to, because of your lack of size, he's had to really match up with some much bigger guys. Yeah, he's, uh, he's playing mostly for, uh, for us right now. Um, and when you look, I think in league play last year, he averaged one and a half points. And, you know, to see him averaging almost 12 uh, now in league play, <clears throat> you know, shows how much work he's, he's putting into it. Uh, but, again, you look at the feel he has. You know, we've got a couple guys sitting out right now that I love. You know, Delano Banton's got as good a feel for the game as anybody I've been around. So, uh, you know, love what he's going to bring to our team next year as well in that in that area uh but yeah thor's going out you know he's going to battle he, you know he's going to be in the right position uh you know at times he'll do everything he needs to do as far as blocking out and unfortunately sometimes a guy just reaches over top of him because he's playing right. really out of position right now but they have to guard him too and that's what's opening up some of those shots is when we're there in a pick and roll coverage and thor can pop out and we slash the five out of there uh he'll be up on the top of the floor by himself shooting the ball in transition where again some of the bigger players they're used to running to the paint uh and that's freed him up for some shots as well but uh you know again the thing i love about thor as much as anything is his feel he's a great teammate he's a great competitor and he's having a heck of a year you mentioned delano banton you do have the three young men who are not eligible to play this year because of the sit out rule update us how are they doing yeah they're doing they're doing uh, you know we do a segment pretty much every day especially when we're co coming into a game where the, the the team with delano with Derek walker with shamil stevenson with jace uh and with brett uh, those guys play the other team and they run their stuff. So we'll do a five on five on five segment and those guys end up winning th that segment quite a bit. Um, and, you know, again, Derek's a really good finisher. He's got great size, uh, six, nine. Uh, he's got a physicality to him uh, that will help us in a big way. He's played at a high level. Uh, when you play at Tennessee, one of your 
playing for a great coach, mm -hmm. Rick Barnes, uh, and he's played in the NCAA tournament in both years uh, that he was there. So that will help us from an experience standpoint. Uh, Shamil gives us a body at 6'6", six, six, about 245. Uh, you know, he looks, he's built like a linebacker, and he's just a big, strong. See the legendary Grave Digger, El Toro Loco, and more of your favorite Monster Jam trucks. Brought to you by BKD Times. Tickets start at $15. Restrictions and additional charges may apply. Monster Jam comes to Pinnacle Bank Arena April 17th and 18th. Eight six six Husker one eight six six four eight seven five three seven one. A few more minutes with the head coach of the Cornhuskers before they head to New Jersey to take on Rutgers over the weekend. Let's go back to the phones. Tom and Lincoln, you're up next. Hey, thanks a lot for for taking my call, uh, Coach. I was just wondering what the routine was for for the players during the home game when they arrive. Say if they've got a, a six o'clock Saturday game uh, what time would they arrive and what would they do until obviously the game is over with thank yeah, you very so, much yeah th yeah thanks for the question tom so we we uh j we'll have a walk through usually about five hours before uh tip and uh, from there, we'll go right to uh, right to our pregame meal. And you know that walkthrough gives us one more time to go through the game plan. We get a lot of shots up. We get them a sweat going. We run through our offense, the package that we feel uh, that can be successful on that given night. Uh, then they go home for a little bit to get rest, and then we have them there uh, 90 minutes before uh, the tip. And what they do is they'll have about 30 minutes to go out there and free shoot and get themselves ready. And then we'll have a structured stretching ses uh, session with Tim Wilson, uh, our strength coach. Uh, They'll get workout in with Armand Gates uh, out there on the floor uh, doing some offensive work and some defensive drills. And then we'll get him back in at about 35 uh, one more time to go through, watch some film, uh, go through the matchups, uh, and then get him back out there and one more time uh, in just to go over some last second details. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good. Those guys have, have done a good job getting in there, getting themselves ready. For the most part, we've gotten off to solid starts uh, this season. A lot of that has to do with their preparation. With all these different tip times, you tipped at 8 o'clock the other night, you're going to tip at 2 o'clock Eastern time Saturday. we got a 6 o'clock game with Michigan. When do you feed them? Do you feed them at the same time before a game, or how does that work? Well, we, we feed them about four hours before okay. on the night games. Now, what I always found when I was a player, you know, when you have breakfast, uh, I like to do it a little bit closer to the tip, uh, you know, being your, really your only meal uh, of the day. So we'll go about three and a half hours before tip if we do it in the afternoon. And, you know, I don't know if that's right or not, Craig, but it's just something that we do. You know, I know some teams do it three right. hours before, but I think pretty much standard uh, what you do is four hours before. NBA is completely different, you know, and it is different from when I played where you're basically on your own to where it is now where you have this big spread and this big buffet when you get back from your shoot around, which is in the morning uh, in the NBA. Uh, and then you're pretty much on your own. If you want to pack yourself a little uh, to-go container, you can eat that before the game. But, um, you know, it's different for different guys. Some guys in there, they eat a lot, and then they'll have a power bar before the game or a, or a protein shake. Some guys don't eat anything. And it's just, you know, kind of your preference on what makes you go and, and uh, you know, how you perform. I played with a guy named Rick Smith, who was a big 7'4 uh, player from Holland, great player of the Pacers. He ate a bowl pass at 11 a.m. for a 7 o'clock game, and that's all he would eat. So, yeah, it's just uh, it's different for different guys, uh, but uh, that, that's what we do with our team. How challenging is that on road games to have food to, at your ready? At home, it's, you got it set up at PBA, but on road games, is it hard? to set that ready for everybody no, or not? No. Uh, you know, Luca, Luca Virgilio, our director of operations, does a phenomenal job of organizing everything. And, you know, we'll have meals the night before at the hotel, watch film. It's actually, actually easier uh, on the road Is because it? everybody's together in the hotel. Yeah. And then we get back for, you know, a pregame meal or we'll watch another edit. And, you know, sometimes do a quick walkthrough. We'll tape a court, tape a floor. Um, a lane and in a hoop onto the onto the floor and uh, you know just have one last time uh, to go through the game plan but uh, Luca does a phenomenal job at organizing all that stuff. One thing that's different for you from Iowa State to here is that you don't play in the building that you practice in. Is that, is that a hard adjustment or not? Uh, I think most teams are like that now where you have an off-campus practice facility or at least a facility that's connected to the uh, arena or to something. the arena yeah. and uh, you know it's just it's the way it is now and in the NBA it's standard NBA uh, yeah everybody's got you know you do your shoot arounds at, at yeah. your practice facility but uh, yeah here it's it's great I mean our you know our practice facility is phenomenal it's as good as any that I've ever been around and the facilities here you know as we've talked a lot about uh, are the nicest I've ever I've ever seen so you know it, it does 
does. It's a luxury to have something like that. Our weight room's phenomenal. Uh, we share it with a couple other sports, uh, which I like. I, I like, you know, when you see other athletes in there uh, getting after it as well, especially the wrestlers. Cause Don't those trust guys, those guys. No, those guys, as you'll talk to Mark Manning here in yeah, a minute, those, we are. Guys, those guys are nuts. But, yeah, it's uh, it's great, you know, and he's, he's phenomenal. You know, Mark's as good a guy as I've ever been around, and he's doing a phenomenal job. Do you get as much access to PBA as you would like to get over there to practice a few times in there? Yeah, day? yeah. I, you know, our guys like going over there uh, when it's available, which it is for the most part, especially once we start conference play. We'll you generally get in there two days before, and then the you know the day before we'll have it, and then obviously the walkthrough will be in there as well. Because I, I think you had a game in December where they, they held graduation in there, and so they had to flip it yeah, from Yeah, I tried that. to kick them out, but it didn't, that didn't work. <laughs> the chancellor said, no, we're going to no. yeah. do this. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of probably fouled up the yeah, routine you know what, a little. Though, I, you know, I, I mean, who knows how all that stuff carries over. I, you know, I, I sometimes we have the best, most focused walkthrough you can possibly have. You think your guys it. are going to go out there and they're just going to kill it, and they go out there with no energy right. and vice versa. Sometimes you think, man, I just don't know if we're ready to play, and you go out there and you just kill it. So, you know, who knows how all that stuff plays out to, you know, the, the, to, the, to the end result, especially, you know, uh, we had, you know, the one-day prep against – Purdue, which we we're all complaining about. We played maybe our best game of the year yeah. leading into that one. So, um, you know, it's just any given night you can go out there, uh, play great, which obviously you're trying to do with energy and compete. Uh, but sometimes it just it works the other way. Did you do some walkthroughs in, Cayman, in the Caymans on the beach? Is that uh, true? It wasn't on the beach. Uh, we had a nice room, or not? Not a, we had a little room, and then we had a little area out in the grass. It was a beautiful <laughs> little area. We tried to get it in the shade. Uh, in our, you know, pretty much everything now, you know, guys will complain about anything. Our guys were complaining it was too hot. Too hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now they're wishing they were back there. No doubt. At that point in time. All right, Rutgers Saturday. Take me through what needs to be different from from game one against them. Well, we need to have a much more. Uh, you have to go out there with a physical mentality right out of the ba- right out of the gate. We and we got up to a good start that game, Greg. We actually had a lead. We watched that game again yesterday. We had a lead uh, at about the six minute mark, mm-hmm. and then they had a great finish to the half. You want to finish the half well, and you want to start each half well. And we didn't finish well, and we didn't start the second half well, and that's what allowed them to open up that game. Uh, but we just we didn't we didn't bring it from a physicality standpoint. It, we have to be better. We have to guard the ball better. We have to rebound better if we want to have a chance. Geo Baker did not play the first time around. What does he bring to the table that you'll have to worry about this week? Yeah, and they're bringing him off the bench. You know, they they obviously play great. Uh, they play great with him. They play great without him. And you know, to have him back in the game, he's a dynamic player. He can get to the rim. <clears throat> Very athletic finisher. He had some high high level finishes at the rim uh, their last couple games. He did. And you know, he's uh, he's a heck of a talent. Yeah. You, you've you've missed some of these guys. Boo Booey didn't play in the Northwestern game. Geo didn't play against this one. So I know sometimes you add an equation. That can be difficult, though. Sometimes a guy hasn't been in your rotation. All of a sudden you bring him back, and it changes the dynamics of a it team. It does. It, it does. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously you want as much talent as you can get in the floor. But when you do, do change up the rotation and you get those guys out there and they're used to playing, you know, 30 – Two minutes as opposed to twenty, and then they got they're going back to twenty. Right, uh, that can change some things. There's no doubt about it. I just wanted to say boo booey. That's why I threw that in <laughs> yeah, there. Nice job. Pretty good name. To, it is a great to, name to throw in there. Yeah. All right, long flight, no big deal, right? I mean, you're on the plane, whether it's an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, it's not like the old days where you got to wake up at six in the morning and take that flight out there commercially. <laughs> I mean, we we travel very well and. Um, yeah, it, it's it is it's it's a long trip, but um, you know again, I, I I'm thankful it's an earlier tip because we will get back at a decent time with the Tuesday game. You hate to get back at three in the morning, and then have to turn around and play uh, that game against Michigan on Tuesday. So afternoon game, uh, biggest thing for us is coming out competing at a high level, playing with great energy, and uh, if we do that, we'll have a chance. One of the best things about this past week was having a Saturday home game with so many TV windows now. When you played, it was pretty much standard. You were always going to play on a Saturday. It's kind of rare now with all these different TV windows. They're all over the place. It was fun having a Saturday night game at PBA last week. It was fun. And, and you know, I talked about it earlier in the show. The atmosphere that we had it was, good. It was phenomenal. And, you know, we appreciate everything. I'm telling you, it does not go unnoticed by our staff, by our team, by our players. Uh, you know, we love the support that we get here at Nebraska. And, you know, we know we're going to continue to get it. And we just want to make our guys proud, our, our fans proud. We want to put a product out that makes them want to keep coming back and, and, uh, and makes them proud to be Huskers. I don't know how much you pay attention. That red zone that sits right behind you, they get, they get into the game pretty good. Yeah, those guys are awesome. And, you know, we, uh, we had a good meeting with, uh, with that group uh, before the season started. And, you know, they just they want to know what they can do to help make, 
life difficult on the opponent. So, yeah, they've been they've been great. Yeah, they, they show up game after game. Yeah. All right, travel safe. Good luck. Let's go get the Scarlet Knights. Great to Saturday. see you.